So once again, hello everybody. It's Monday, it's the Deer Park, it's the Buddha Center. It's good to see everybody. Uh, let's start like we normally do, short period of bell meditation. So wherever you are behind your avatar, please get into a nice meditation posture. And as I ring the Ching bell, just focus on the sound of the bell. Really get that deep listening going. Really get that concentration going so you can absorb some Dharma. Chances are you'll get distracted. If it happens, I just want you to gently remind yourself and go back to focusing on the sound of the bell. There'll be a short pause after the meditation. I'll do the three recitations and then on with the talk for today. So I'll give you a moment, get into a nice meditation posture. We'll begin at the sound of the bell. I go for refuge to the Buddha, the teacher. I go for refuge to the Dhamma, the teaching. I go for refuge to the Sangha, the taught. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dhamma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I have taken refuge in the Buddha. I have taken refuge in the Dhamma. I have taken refuge in the Sangha. Three pure precepts. Cease to do harm. Do only good. Do good for others. Bodhisattva vow. However innumerable all beings are, I vow to lead them all. However inexhaustible my delusions are, I vow to extinguish them all. However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are, I vow to master them all. However endless the Buddha's way is, I vow to follow it completely. Swaha. Test, test. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we are uh, in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. So it's good to see everybody here. Uh, it's nice that we're doing our part for uh, physical distancing, right? Uh, today, we're going to talk about AAA. We're going to talk about assistance on the path. Okay, three A's, three nice capital A's. 
Oh, so those of you that have been on the path, the noble path for a while, those of you that are first now getting on the noble path, I think we can all agree it's not an easy path to be on, right? We have to give up some things. We have to start some new things. We have to uh, develop a new way of thinking and a new way of acting. Right? And uh, so it requires us to view ourselves and the world around us from more appropriate angles. Not necessarily views that we might even be comfortable with, especially when it comes to what we learn about ourselves, right? We might learn some views that we go, oh, I don't really like that very much. Or it might be things that we don't even have any previous experience with, right? They may be things that we're actually viewing for the first time. And along the noble path, there are teachers, you know, and we're here to mentor and monitor so we can, you know, help you out along the path. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there are books and texts that can kind of act as maps, right? We tend to read a lot of books and texts. And there are, of course, videos, you know, YouTube, there's stuff on Netflix and Hulu and all that. But most importantly, out of all that, there is the experience that we gain from actually practicing the Dharma, getting out there and doing it. Still, even if we have a huge commitment to practice and we put in lots of effort in that practice, we can still find ourselves questioning our world. what would be our view of the unique situations that we find ourselves in as they arise. Uh, traveling by car, you know, if we're traveling across America by car, uh, we can rely on the American Automobile Association, that's AAA, to help when issues arise. Car breaks down, you get lost, whatever. AAA is there. Hello, Jules. Glad you made it. And traveling on the noble path, we can rely on three ideals that when they meet the real, will help us when issues arise. And those are awareness, acceptance, and action. Oh, Jules, thank you, but we're just glad you made it. Let me just put these three words up here. And they're not strange words. If you've been on the path and listening to Dharma talks from myself and others, you've heard all three of these words. You've heard awareness, you've heard acceptance, you've heard action. But we're going to put them all three together because they kind of work really well together. So we start out with awareness. Awareness is being aware or mindful, if you will, of how you are right now. In this moment, how are you? Not how you would prefer to be. So being aware or mindful that how you may think things are isn't how they might actually be. Now let's just point to what's going on right now in the whole world with this coronavirus pandemic. That's how we are right now. It certainly is not how we would prefer to be. And there are some people that think they know what's going on or think they have great ideas, but maybe that how isn't actually what we need to be doing when they're saying, this is how you should act. Now, you will experience, in human existence, a sense of unsatisfactoriness, discontent, and anguish. At some time in your life, you're going to suffer. This is what Siddhartha awoke to, and then he went on to offer us the reality of the Four Ennobling Truths. That to alleviate suffering, you first got to be aware that it's real. You got to be aware that the reality of its causation and the reality that suffering can be alleviated. And then, of course, you can look to the guide of the Eightfold Path. Now, a lifelong Buddhist practice is, at least in the beginning, and man, I say this a lot, focused on being aware of how you really are, what your dispositions and habits really are, how you really act, react, and respond. And all of this takes rigorous self-honesty. But then, as your practice matures, you expand that same realization and that same awareness to the world around you, right? You get that broader view. And the key is viewing all of this as it is. Set aside personal preferences, 
set aside any erroneous vision you might have of things and see things through a clearer lens. Right now, this is difficult to do. Things are moving fast. Danger is, seems to be right around the corner. So sometimes it's hard to see through a clearer lens. So mindfulness or awareness is the way to see past delusion and view ourselves, the world, and the situations we are experiencing as they really are. So awareness is kind of one of these ideals meeting the real, if you will. Now, normally, I give this, this talk about this subject, I don't have this coronavirus in the middle of it. But, while coronavirus pandemic is certainly, well, let's just say it sucks, because that's what it does, it's also an opportunity for us to practice. Because in this moment, the entire world is experiencing something unprecedented. And it is not that there haven't been health emergencies in the past. It is that this particular health emergency is happening with a broadly different set of circumstances. So you look at the Spanish flu epidemic of, what was it, 1918? Right? Killed a lot of people, made a lot of people sick. But it didn't travel around the world like this is doing today, with the speed that it's doing today. So it is up to each one of us to be mindful of how we are choosing to respond. Giving examples. You know, are you choosing to respond by going, like Evangeline Lilly, the, the actress saying, well, you're not going to infringe on my freedom, I'm going to go do whatever I want, and to heck with everybody else. Or are you being aware that you could be the problem, or you could cause suffering in others, and so you're following the rules and staying inside when you're supposed to? So, if we're going to choose to respond, we have to do it in a, an appropriate way. And so to do that, we've got to develop and we've got to maintain, this is important, develop and maintain awareness of where our information is coming from, whether it's a trusted source or a not trusted source. Because we cannot be aware of the reality if we're getting information that isn't based in reality. So it's very important. So awareness, that's the first thing. And you could call it awareness or mindfulness, depending on. So the next thing is acceptance. Accepting that what you do matters and that what happens around you matters. That's what you need to accept. Accepting that in this causal universe, you do have the freedom to engage in transformation. And you can choose, is it going to be wholesome, positive transformation? Or is it going to be unwholesome, negative transformation? That's your choice. And it's a freedom that no other sentient being can lay claim to. Only us humans can lay claim to this ability. And it took Siddhartha, it took time for him to accept the realities of human existence. But after his awakening, he had to take the next step and he accepted his role as a teacher to others. Thank goodness, right? We wouldn't be here if he did. But to implement a successful Buddhist practice, there are realities that you have to accept. And not on faith, you accept these through your own experiential verification. For example, in this causal connected world, every action and inaction you take has consequences. Period. There is nothing you can do that won't have an effect outside of that particular action. Nothing. And the other thing you need to accept is to make a positive or wholesome change or transformation, you have to take wholesome or positive action. Period. It doesn't work any other way. Accept the responsibility that once you gain the knowledge and the information, and then you verify through experience that wholesome change is possible through committed practice, then you also have to accept that you have the responsibility to engage in that practice. Basically, if it works, 
and it brings about wholesome results, continue to do it. But what about acceptance in the face of this coronavirus pandemic? Well, there's two important things to accept during this health emergency. You can be a carrier of COVID-19 and not even have symptoms. Not even have symptoms ever. You can just be a carrier. That's a frightening thought. The other thing you really need to accept is this will pass. This is not permanent. I'm speaking of the, uh, the disease itself is not permanent. What we're hoping for is the, the, uh, the economic conditions that they will also pass. We can keep a positive thought on that. But we each have to do our part to limit the spread. And we have to accept that part. Whether we think we are the healthiest individual on the planet and we think, no, I can go down to, to uh, Daytona Beach, Florida and party like it's 1999 and ignore the idea that I can infect and uh, harm others. We have to do our part to limit the spread. Because as Buddhists, if our idea is to alleviate suffering, if that's our Let's call it our main goal as Buddhists. Then we have to accept our part in it. Then there's action. Awareness, acceptance, and action. Buddhism is not a passive philosophy. We don't just sit around on our butts all the time and wait for things to happen or hope they happen or just think about suffering all the time and how terrible it is. My teacher, Shi Yong Shang, he said, quote, but if we seek to employ the fruits of Buddhism in our lives, there is no way around actually doing it. Knowing about Buddhism in no way translates into action if we are not doing, unquote. It's easy to say, hey, I'm a Buddhist. It's a lot harder to be one. So to truly implement your Buddhist practice, you've got to take actions. You've already taken the action necessary to recognize your unsatisfactoriness and discontent because you came and found a teacher or a talk or a YouTube video or whatever to learn more. And it took action to accept that there was an avenue of transformation, that there was a way to get that positive transformation. And it will take more, and it'll take a lot more action to engage in a successful Buddhist practice. But don't let it intimidate you, because it's also fun. So you may be striving to maintain, say, a regular meditation practice, or you're trying to read some sutras. And in the morning, you're bowing to the Buddha image on your bookshelf. And maybe you found some cool mala beads that you're wearing. And you're making the effort to follow the precepts. With this, you've kind of chosen the seed of a spiritual goal. But still something's missing. One action you can take is to go out and find a teacher, a teacher that can mentor and monitor you. They can also provide guidance for you to reach that goal of wholesome personal development and then go on to that development of a social self, a selfless social self. This will take attending meetings of different Buddhist traditions led by different teachers. You, know, you might need to check out a Tibetan teacher and check out a Zen teacher and check out a Chan teacher, a Pure Land teacher. And along the way, awareness has a role in experiencing whether a teacher or tradition has personal or social value for you. Acceptance arises when the appropriate teacher and tradition are realized. So oh, I accept that. I'm going I'm to work with that. So committing to a teacher and tradition, then, is the action. 
for another way. Finding a teacher will lead to finding a Sangha, as we are here, but it can actually work the other way around. You might start talking to a group of people and they might say, oh yeah, we attend you know, this particular Sangha. And you say, oh, well you like the people that you're talking to, so you think, well maybe I'll like the teacher too, and you go attend the Sangha and see. Go to a session, check it out. So this is when you might realize that your practice was missing this critical social element. You know, you've been trying to do it by yourself at home and reading books and looking at videos and all that. But you start to get the sense that this social thing, getting together with others, is important. These are folks that will help you maintain the momentum of your practice. Right? Think of the Sangha as friendly neighbors. Right? Ready to lend a hand when things get hard and doubts arise. Because that's what we're here for. You know, they'll help build the barn, and they can help you pull up the weeds, too. They can help you cultivate healthier ways to achieve that wholesome transformation that you're looking for. So a teacher can guide, it can mentor, it can monitor your practice. A sangha can help support you in your practice. In the end, though, in order for any positive gains to be made, it is your practice. On the noble path, you are alone with others. Well, let's go back to COVID-19. Take appropriate actions. This might seem like a no-brainer, but you know, depending on how long a quarantine or a stay-at-home order goes on, the time is going to come where somebody's going to want to circumvent it, right? Maybe you'll get a little stir crazy. Man, I got to get out of here. I got to go do something. Well, don't take actions dependent on what you want. You know, I want to get out of the house. I want to go to the movies. I want to go to the bar. You need to take your appropriate actions based on need. So we all need to get out of the house on occasion, right? Get a little sunshine, a little exercise, walk the dogs, whatever. That's a need. So that can get you out of the house. Let's call it legitimate, right? And then there's the need to stay healthy and the need for your family and friends to stay healthy. The need for your neighbors and your co-workers and strangers to stay healthy. Right? We want to look at everybody. Because we want to be selfless about our actions. We don't want to be like those people that just say, nah, I don't care. And they just go do whatever they want. They try to live their lives as normal in the midst of all this, and they're causing suffering for others. And maybe they don't transfer the disease to someone else. Maybe they're not a carrier. Maybe they're just totally neutral as they walk around. It might seem that way, but think of the suffering that they're causing others by just the fear, the anxiety of, what that, why is that person getting close to me, for example? Because in the end, what we do matters. And in the case of what's going on right now across the world, this takes on even more importance that what we do matters. If you need to stay at home, stay at home. If you've got a job that you have to go to, just be aware and have the least amount of contact with people you can. Accept that even though you may feel good, you may still be a carrier. And especially if you get sick, accept that you're sick, stay home and deal with it. Go to the doctor. If you need. So early on in exploring Buddhism, you become aware of the practice that, of meditation, right? Meditation, tightly woven into the overall experience of personal and social wholesome development in Buddhism, in a Buddhist practice. And you come to accept that 2,500 plus, give or take, years of experience is proof of the value of a meditation practice. And accept that you can make time in your busy schedule to meditate regularly. So each of these steps is an action. 
And the encompassing action is making a meditation not only a matter of just sitting, but a matter of how you are in each moment. So you practice commitment to the Buddhist path by engaging in a regular meditation practice, and before long, you find yourself committed to that regular meditation practice. I'm using meditation here, but we can put in any of the call them buzzwords of Buddhism. I could say uh, the practice of generosity is tightly woven into the overall experience, for example. Selflessness we can throw in there. So meditation is just kind of a placeholder for all these Buddhist practices. And you become aware of the importance and value in not just being compassionate, but also acting compassionately in all circumstances. And you might think, well, but I, if I am compassionate, then I will automatically act compassionately. Not so. Something to be aware of. Accepting that thinking and acting compassionately engenders wholesome karmic consequences can open our body-mind to a fresh worldview. You can recognize the importance of compassionate action, and now you have a responsibility to make compassion how you think, but also how you take action. In the fourth ennobling truth is awareness, acceptance, and action revealed. And that's in the Eightfold Path. This is when we can really see awareness, acceptance, and action in action, if you will. So you want to view yourself practicing each moment. See yourself as that practitioner in every moment. Practice with the intention of bringing positive change to how you are. Practice speaking to yourself and others as if you've already achieved great strides towards your goal. Practice is an action that you engage moment to moment. Make Buddhist practice part of your livelihood. Oh, and your livelihood too. Put some effort into your practice. Practice mindfulness so that delusions and wants don't lead to inappropriate actions. And then concentrate on being an agent for wholesome change. So, AAA, assistance on the path. Awareness, acceptance, action. Practice being aware understand what you need to accept, and get on with the actions needed to make it happen in a wholesome way. So I want to talk a little about homework before I do the, the question and answer section. Um, what I'd like you to do for homework uh, during this next week is look at this Awareness, acceptance, action in the light of what you're dealing with individually and with your family during this pandemic. This is when you can really practice these three ideals. Because information is coming at us hard and fast. Things are happening. Things are changing. Impermanence is kind of the call of the day. Right? It's the, maybe the, the word of the day that comes up on your computer. So be aware of what's going on around you. Accept that you're going to have to do things that you're really probably not going to be happy with, and that's okay. It's not going to be forever. And then take the appropriate actions that will be a benefit to yourself, to your family and friends, and then to everybody else, too. Because we're not in this alone. We're each unique expressions of the universe. There's only going to be one of us. But we're not unique in the universe because we're here with a bunch of other human beings that kind of go through a lot of the same things we do. 